It's always been about creating conversations. Arrow.net. A-R-R-O-E.net. All right, let's do it. Let's play it forward. These are real people, real stories. We are Unplugged and Totally Uncut with Marty Croft. Well, I'm, I've been here since early in the morning, and I'm still awake. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, you got a big day coming up with Croft Cause. As a huge fan of yours, growing up with everything that you've ever done, this has got to be a major moment for fans as well as you. Well, we'll see. You know, this is an idea that came about, and it's, you know, something that it's like a pilot we're doing on this thing Saturday, and uh, we'll see where this goes. So, because we'd like to go out on tour with something like this. So that's what the plan is. I was going to ask you, because I would love for Croft Cause to come to a Charlotte or to come to Atlanta, because, I mean, we're all over the country, fans. That's right. Well, listen, we live long enough to see all this happen. So you're right. We got the, you know, because of television, we got the fans everywhere. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when you play live, you're playing in a specific city. But once you're on television on a network that everybody gets to see you. And that's why we're still breathing and doing this. <laughs> one, one of the things that, that's going to be happening at Croft Cause is the, the movie H.R. Puff and stuff. The, if, to be in that moment, I mean, to, to be able to see it with, with everybody present there is, is just going to be special. Well, we hope so. You know, we're going to find out on Saturday because <laughs> we got a lot of good things coming there and we'll see what happens. You know, it's, it's an intimate convention which is good for us not interested in these big big thousands of people and you know you never get to touch anybody so we want to touch the fans that the fans are what it's all about yeah and you know what's really weird is that the adults that grew up still can sing all the theme songs so we screwed with everybody's minds when they were kids and of course when we did these shows there were only three networks so i would say every kid that ever watched Kid shows have watched our shows. So that's why we have such a big following, which is great. A piece of the technology that you're going to be using this uh, for, for the event is is the fact that, that people will be able to live stream it and, and participate that way as well. Yeah, we're going to do, do whatever they're going to do. Let me tell you, we're going to show up and do what we have to do to meet the fans. And as usual, let the people that, that work with us contribute, you know, any uh, technology or whatever. But, you know, it's, it, it's, we'll see what happens. Now, we kept it simple, so we'll see what happens. One, one of the things that I always found fascinating about any production from Sid and Marty Croft is the fact that the colors were always vibrant. You, you, it was like, you, you know, it, it, it's, they were feel-good colors. Did you guys do that on purpose? Well, you know, those, those are our colors. We stayed with all the colors our identification, our, our colors, and, you know, and, I don't know, we are like Technicolor. Mm -hmm. So that you see our, once they see our logo, they know it's our show, because we've never changed it. I love the idea that, that Puffin Stuff had a life before television, that, that he was actually a, a character that was on your live performance, and you guys said, let's run with this, let's let's make this happen. Well, yeah. Well, you know, Coca-Cola, uh, was our sponsor at Six Flags all the years we were there. So they asked us to do their their pavilion at the San Antonio World's Fair. And that's where Puff and Stuff was born, under the name of Luther. And he became like the symbol of the fair. And then when we were doing the banana splits for NBC and Kellogg's and Coke, they asked us, to, the head of NBC program, and said, look, why don't you create your own show? So we took that character, Luther, and turned it into a, a half-hour show of puff and stuff. And we created all those characters. There were close to 80 characters in puff and stuff. Mm. And, and what, what I love about uh, modern-day television, especially HD radio and, and HD uh, uh, television, is the fact that I can still watch puff and stuff and still feel like that I'm watching it for the very first time. Well, that's nice. Well, that's, you know... You know, the thing that most people don't realize, we only had 17 episodes. Wow. And we had like 100 repeats. So kids thought there were 100 shows. <laughs> but there were only 17. And it's legendary. So that's kind of amazing. 
Do you feel like one of the Beatles? Because, I mean, you guys really changed the, the course of television on Saturday mornings. Well, I don't feel like one of them because they got the cash. <laughs> you know, Michael Eisner, Michael Eisner, who was the head of Disney and Paramount and ABC, said to me at lunch one day, he said, you know what, you, you made the mistake, Marty. You should have been on my end of the business. But you know what you did? I said, no, what? He said, you went for the fame not the cash. Oh. And that was the story. I've heard a lot of musicians share that story with me. That in fact, in fact, my wife's ex husband says, I, I don't want to be I don't want the fame. I, I want to write the songs. I want to produce the songs. Yeah, well, you know. So that was that's what we did. Yeah. Lids- that's why we're so worried. Lidsville was was a huge favorite because I do you is it because everybody could relate with every one of those hats because it's like the the hat matched what it was that they were bringing to the screen. Well, when I hear you say that, it kind of blows my mind because you, know, you get too close to these things and you say, "Wait a second, is anybody going to really care?" And you know, then you hear people like you that say that and say, "Wow, I guess I must have done something right." Well, well, my mother used to say all the time. My brother, my brother used to go out on the beach mm-hmm. and run every day with a different hat. Yeah. So he said, let's do a show with hats. So I said, okay, let's see what that is. So, you know, things like, like with Sigmund, he claims he was sitting on a rock and saw a piece of seaweed in the ocean. He thought that was Sigmund. So I said, Sid, are you sure you... Your mind was in the right place, <laughs> but that's how it was born. I, I I love the idea that that he he wanted to be the main attraction. He didn't want to be the opening act anymore. So he, then you brought in the business side of the show business, and all of a sudden that team was born. Right. Well, you know, I did both. Uh, I was in a I was a mixed bag. You know, I gave you know creatively. You know, I always tell people. The most creative things I did first was to get the network to buy it. Yep. You know, and then the, you know the other things followed. You know, then I went out and got the people, the stars, and I would go to Europe. I went to London to get Jack Wilde and Puff and stuff. And at the time I got him, he was up for the Oscar for the movie Oliver. Yes, he was. He played the Oscar Dodge. So I mean, I went after people like that. And like with Land of the Law, as soon as we got that picked up, I said, wait a second, Star Trek just got canceled. Let me go get all their writers. <laughs> I did. Okay, so that that basically, <laughs> that was the beginning of a lot of creative input. When when you took your show out on the road, did you guys live and play hard like rock stars? Because, I mean, people were coming to see your performance. Well, it's dependent upon what that was or what, that, what period of time. If you're talking about while we were doing the kid shows, that was one kind of, you know, situation. Mm-hmm. When we were the opening act, you know, I, I think we were there to warm up the audience. And, you know, so someone like Judy Garland wanted to have somebody that was consistent that would be her opening act so they would warm up the audience for her. You know, so that was... If that's what you're talking about, that's what happened. Wow. Well, it's been 50 years, and I can't thank you enough for allowing us to step into your imaginations and create worlds of our own, sir. Hey, thank you. It was great speaking with you. Will you be brilliant today, okay, Marty? Okay, I hope I get to see you in Charlotte when we bring Carl Croft on there.